Hello again, welcome to the Academy. This video is part of a series on top three topics. Today we're going to be talking about lines and planes. So the first thing we're going to talk about is lines. Well, how we describe a line in three dimensions. Usually in two dimensions, a line is described by something like y equals ax plus b. Or similar equation. But in three dimensions, we have to have a little more information because we have x, y, and z axes. So the first way we're going to describe a line is we'll start with our initial point. Y not, Z not. And to describe this line, we're going to determine which direction it goes from this point. And so we have a vector, V, pointing in the direction of this line. So the line will look something like this, in the direction of the vector. So if we say our vector is A, B, C, you can see the components in the x, y, and z directions, respectively. Then we can see this as a sort of velocity vector. That's how fast a particle moving on this line goes. So we come up with parametric equations to describe the motion of this point and thus describe the line. And so we're going to describe it in terms of t, as we can see. For every, let's assume it's going at uh, unit speed, for every one t that passes, a is how much it changes in the x direction. So it's going to start at x naught plus a t. And so at time t equals 1, the point will be right here, and t equals 2, there will be another one of those, and so on. In the x direction, the same thing for the y direction. It starts at y naught, plus b in this case, is how fast it's going in that direction, and z is z naught plus c t. And so this is a general parametric form. of a line in three-dimensional space. So, maybe we should do an example here. So, say we start off at the point one, two, negative one. vector. So it's two, three, five. So it would look something like this. It would be two in the x direction, three in the y, and five like that. So the line would be looking like this. You can sort of visualize that. And the equation would be x equals 1 plus 2t, y equals 2 plus 3t, and z equals negative 1 plus 5t. And that would be the set of parametric equations. But there's another way to express lines, and that is, if you solve for t in these equations, you'll see that Let's see, in this one we say t equals, we bring the 1 over x minus 1 over 2. In this case, t equals y minus 2 over 3. 
and this one t equals z plus 1 over 5. And since, of course, t equals itself, we can set all of these equal to each other to get what's called a symmetric form. Generally, if you use the a, b, c, and the x not y not z not, this generalizes to x minus x not over a equals y minus y not over b equals z minus z not over c, or a, b, c are not zero, of course. And so basically, those are the two ways to describe a line in three dimensions. Now, let's talk about planes. I talked about planes in a few videos before, but I want to describe them in a little bit more detail. Basically, a plane, we can think of it as a set of points. And every point on this plane has the same normal vector, which is a vector perpendicular to the plane. I'll call that vector n normal, which is also perpendicular. So it's at a right angle. So basically, since every point on the plane has the same normal vector, that is, there's a vector that is perpendicular to the whole plane, then we can describe a plane based on a point and the normal vector. So we have our initial point, x naught, y naught, z naught, and we have the normal vector, we know what it is, and we can find an equation for the whole plane. And basically, this is what it is. So given this point, we say the whole plane must be perpendicular to this normal vector. Every point in the plane, if we draw a vector to another point in the plane, Z, assume this is the plane of the board, so this will be the normal vector. So every vector from here to here must be perpendicular to our normal vector that we already know what it is. So n is vector a, b, c. Then the vector p, p1 is perpendicular to n as long as p1 is a point on the plane. And so earlier when we were talking about vectors, we said that if two vectors are perpendicular, then the dot product is zero. So that means that p, p1, dot product of n equals zero. And p, p1, well, we can see this has to be, to go from x naught to x, that's just x minus x naught. Same thing from y to y naught will be y minus y naught and then z minus z naught. And that's this dot product of n, when we say n is a, b, c, a, b, c equals zero. And like I said earlier, with dot product, this just means that we multiply this times this. So a x minus x naught plus b y minus y naught plus c z minus z naught equals zero. And this is the equation of the plane. 
if we know an initial point P0 and the normal vector, we give you this. So we can look at an example. Let's say our initial point is 1, 7, 3. And we know that it's normal to the direction 4, 8, 1, 2. And so the equation of this plane would be 4 x minus 1 plus negative 1 y minus 7 plus 2 z minus 3 equals 0 based on this equation down here. And if we want, we can expand this 4x minus 4 minus y plus 7 plus 2 2z minus 6 equals 0, or 4x minus y plus 2z, z. minus 3 equals 0, or if you want 4x minus y plus 2z equals 3. So just like with a line in two dimensions, you have the general form ax plus by equals c. For a plane in three dimensions, you have ax plus by plus cz equals d as a general form as well. It's another form, and a, b, and c are also a, b, and c from the normal vector. And d sort of corresponds to a displacement from the origin. So now, let's do one example where we try to find a plane given three points. As we know, three points determine the plane for the non collinear. So let's say we have the points P1, 2, 3, negative 1. P2 is 1, negative 3, 7. 3 is 3, 4, 1. So we have these three points. Nice. Case here. And so P1 would be Two is one, negative three. Seven. Somewhere around here. And P three is three or one. The plane that goes through all three of them will look something like this, probably. So we know how to find the equation of this plane if we knew a normal vector to this plane. But how would we find a normal vector? Well, one way we could do it is let's look at the vector from P1 to P3. And the vector from P1 to P2. And these two vectors are both in this plane, of course, because all, all three points are in the plane. But how can we find a vector normal to both of these vectors? Well, when I talked about vectors earlier, we said that the cross product will give you a vector that's perpendicular to both vectors. And so what we can do is we can find the cross product of these two vectors to find a normal vector to the plane. And so the vector P1, P3, and the vector P1, P2, 
and what are they? Let's see. From P1 to P3, well, this is uh, plus 1, plus 1, and then plus 2. And this one is minus 1, minus 6, plus 8. So the cross product of these two vectors, we know by the formula that we had earlier, I, J, K, 1, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 6, 8. So find the term of this, that was, what is this, 8i plus negative 2j plus negative 6k minus negative k minus 12i plus 8j. So if we add these together, 8i minus negative 12i, so that's 20i. Negative 2j minus 8j is negative 10j. Negative 6k minus a negative k is negative 5k. Or just 20, negative 10, negative 5. So that is a normal vector to this plane, this n. And since we have an initial point, we actually have three initial points, we can choose from any of these. So basically, let's put it into that equation and see what we get. 20 x minus 2, I'm just going to use p1, plus negative 10 y minus 3, minus 5, z plus 1, equals 0, and now what we can actually factor out is a factor of 5 here. This would be 4 times x minus 2, so 4x minus 8, and then this would be negative 2, so it would be negative 2y plus 6, that's just negative 1, so it's minus z minus 1, equals 0, you can just divide by 5, simplify this, you get 4x minus 2y minus z is minus 3 equals 0, or 4x minus 2y minus z equals 3. And of course this equation is also perfectly acceptable. And as I find the equation of a plane given three points. So that's about it for lines of planes, and I'll see you in the next video.